Some of you may have heard of, have heard a little bit of a version of this test or this presentation at some of the WICO events. Um, but we've done some more testing and we wanted to bring um, those results to you, all you guys and have it recorded. Um, we recently did some testing with all four major vendors, Ekahau, Hamana, Cytos, and NetAlly, um, with their tools measuring surveys. So how we did it is Fernay, me, and uh, Zach here and another guy, we walked one after another through the exact same spaces um, doing a survey. And so, but let me preface this with, this with, please no vendor on vendor violence, please, as Keith uh, talked about this morning. Um, this is purely providing data. I'm not providing vendor A is better than vendor B. This is strictly just providing data so that you and your teams can look at the, or can plan and accordingly with um, some of these, thi these things. Um, as UC just talked about, this may be things of the past in the future um, with what's coming down the pipeline, but definitely this is still valid use cases right now with what we're doing with the survey data, and so, but please avoid the vendor A is better than B. Um, so as I said, we used four different tools, Ekao Sidekick 2, Hamana Osseum Nomad, the Cytos Wave, and the NetAlly Net CyberScope Air. Um, lots of... Lots of walking, lots of survey points, lots of data was gathered during these surveys. Um, we, did, we tested two different venues. First was a high school back in May, June time frame. Um, they had extreme AP 4000s, uh, Wi-Fi 6E low power indoor APs. Um, so we, we tested that for an event we were having, preparation for the event. And then a, couple, a week and a half ago, we surveyed an American football stadium with standard power outdoor APs lit up, working right now, doing six gigahertz outdoors. So we wanted to test a lot of things, so let's get into it. Um, quickly, <laughs> measurements require certain rules, right? We have the Olympics kind of showed us this, how some people kind of got into the Olympics and didn't, made, made a lot of great memes, right? Ray Gunn, uh, if you don't know Elizabeth Sweeney, go look her up, she's hilarious. Um, from 2018, from her Olympic thing, but we kind of need some, some ground rules. So what we are surveying is we're looking at coverage, there's lots of data points. Everybody measures things slightly different from these different tools. Coverage was, was one of the big things we looked at, how the, de how the device performed, and some different things. Um, there's a lot more data points that we can pull from this data. I don't have time to talk about every single data point. But largely, I'm going to look at coverage as my main view right here. Um, so we have some, some rules to get going. Um, this was our first survey test we did. We, wa or we walked around with all four devices. Um, and then we did the high school with the extreme AP 4000s. Um, so first off with the Sidekick 2, um, we surveyed, walked the building, as we all know. Fernay was kind of, we just kind of went and did a discovery. Um, we, we used, we had three of the tools on the first discovery check, but I'm just going to show the sidekicks version for the first survey. It was kind of a discovery, what's there, let's see what we need to improve, and then we'll do some more testing in a little bit. So 2.4, looks pretty expected. Five gigahertz, a little bit less um, coverage, but as expected, there's a lot of APs. These, we realized these APs were turned on ex like really, really high power. So we had to turn that down eventually. And then we got to six gigahertz and it was turned off. They, a year before, we had an event at the same location and they had had issues. They'd put it in like a week before and they had is issues and they blamed it on the six gigahertz so they disabled it. The full rest of the school year, they didn't turn six gigahertz, six gigahertz back on. So we're like, please turn that on and then we'll come back and survey some more. So we went back and did round two. Um, this time we had, we added NetAlly to the, to the mix. And so we had Ekhaus, uh, Hamana, um, we had all four tools. Uh, we also turned six gigahertz on 40 megahertz just to see where we were trying to wondering about, will this be enough spectrum? Um, to handle all this, 
or can we go 80s? So we're kind of just starting with 40s, let's see, and then we'll, we'll, we'll maybe dump, bump it up. Um, as I said before, we start with the sidekick. Um, with all four tools, we've used the exact same data points to measure, to get things kind of standardized. Um, so, so the maps, we use the exact same maps, zaps the same scaling points, try, trying to give each, devi each device kind of a more standard normalization. Um, with the uh, Hamana Nomad, um, you can use the WMPI or the Nomad. We use the Nomad. Um, everybody knows how that works. Um, we also s align the floors in the exact same points as possible, just trying to get everything normalized. Um, Cytos Wave, you get a scan of cool QR code, and then um, I got one feedback item from the guy that was using, was walking around with Cytos as they really liked how you move the map instead of you move the data point. Really cool thing the Cytos guys are doing that's a little different than everybody else thought I'd highlight here. Um, the Cyberscope, uh, we just had it out running tap, 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 just as expected, worked great in the high school. Um, so we just click, click, clicked, walked around, um, one right after the other, as you can kind of say there, it's kind of blurry, but the four of us all walking one after another, following the exact same path. Um, then we got into, the sidekick. After we did all the survey, we got in the sidekick, and the sidekick had no data in six gigahertz. Six gigahertz was turned on, we're like, what the heck? Um, this is now fixed, but um, to kind of explain, those are the only APs the sidekick saw at the time. This is back in May, June. This has been fixed, but at the time, they could not see PSC channels. So, that's all the channels. If you you can't really see it, but all the all the radios had the the primary channel on the first channel, not the second, not the PSC channel. So so, so Ekahau couldn't see it. It's now been fixed. Not to bash on the Ekahau guys, it's been fixed. Um, but at the time, this was an issue. Got it fixed. Um, that's what this these type of tests are for: is to help kind of help the community get better, help the vendors get better, and so this has been fixed. Um, and so n we now can see six gigahertz on everything at once this was fixed. Um, this is the Cytos view, six gigahertz. Everything looks great, uh, all the data points. Um, we definitely did see that there was some power issues still, and so we fixed some of those. This is the Link Live view um, from NetAlly. Same, just kind of green maps. And so we, had, we found all these little differences and then we're like, okay, let's go back, let's bump up the six gigahertz to 80s and do some more testing. So this round with a sidekick, this is 2.4 and five gigahertz on, on the sidekick two. Um, all the data points next to each other. This is floor two, floor three. Looks pretty, pretty close um, as you can see here. Just as expected. This is Hamana, 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz, as expected. Floor 2, floor 3. This is Cytos, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 and 6 on the first floor, second floor, and then the third floor, is as kind of we're expecting. And then net out of life, floor 1, floor 2, and floor 3. Um, nothing big there. When, but what we, when we really get into data, this is where it starts looking cool. So this is a side-by-side -side of, I can't remember this, if this is 2.4 or which, oh, it's 2.4 gig, gigahertz. Um, this is a side-by-side -side of every vendor, all four vendors on one map of the first floor. Every, if you look at them, if you look down in the data, they are pretty close. Um, Ekahau's doing a good job. Um, grabbing the data, Hamina is doing a great job. They're just looking at beacons and grabbing all the beacons at the same and just displaying what they're hearing. Um, so when it comes to coverage, they are pretty close. So whichever tool you select for your company, if you're looking at this type of thing, at this data point, it's actually handling pretty good. Um, they display it slight, slightly different with their heat maps and different things, but it, it's, it's a pretty good uh, show. Here's five gigahertz. Um, for those that are interested, um, want to take a quick picture. Um, about the same, you get kind of the same areas on how they're displaying things. Um, the devices are slightly different. You'll have some different offsets and different things on them from one device to the next on, on their survey tools, but they're pretty close. 
And then this is six gigahertz. Um, you see kind of some dead spots where you lose six gigahertz on the different maps. That's, that's to be expected. Um, so this is just another view. I'll, this is floor two and then floor two on five and floor two on six and then floor, th and then floor three on 2.4, floor three on five gigahertz and floor six. Floor three on six gigahertz. Um, getting a tw tongue twister here. Lots of data. Um, and there's our little fun thing. This is where we really get interesting is we're digging into an American football stadium with standard power. Who is here has seen standard power in six gigahertz out in the, out in the world, right? There's not a ton of people that have seen it yet. Um, that's why I wanted to come to this, this stadium um, to do this testing. Um, this stadium fits 16,000 people, if I remember right. Uh, very large venue. Had no people in it. As you can see there, there's nobody in here. So we're hearing every single AP throughout. Wherever you walked in this thing, you are hearing every single beacon everywhere you, um, you walk. So um, digging into it. So I sat down with... Adrian Ganados' uh, Wi-Fi Explorer Pro 3, sat there and just pulled it up in one seat in the, about the mid middle of the stadium. I could see 1,648 APs that were just the stadiums. I could see a few from outside the stadium. That's a lot of APs. Um, 882. APs on six gigahertz. I don't know what was the difference, half of those, why only half of them had six gigahertz on, I didn't dig into that detail. Um, the six gigahertz was six, was 40 megahertz wide, uh, set, the channels were set to 40 megahertz wide, um, and it just went crazy. If you can notice up there on the right, I sorted it by, um, sorted his tool there by six gigahertz on um, showing the beacons. He had, on channels, he had 39, 40, 38, 45 APs on six gigahertz that it could see at one time on every single channel. There was a, like channel one and 117 um, kind of only had one for some reason. Um, the RRM hadn't done its job very well. But um, it was just kind of crazy how many APs we could see. You see the beacon percentage? You're seeing five, 6% beacon coverage just, just from beacons, no traffic at all, no clients connected, just beacons, five to 6% utilization from beacons. So crazy what, is, what you're seeing in a football stadium. Uh, this changes when you have people in there, as you'll know, as those who have designed for stadiums, um, we're, we're bags of water, so we rely on people to be in the building to help kind of help attenuate some of the signal so that we don't see AP1 on the other side of the stadium and cause, as have as big of interference issues. But pretty cool to see. Fernay and everybody that teaches the CWNA classes and the beginner classes talk about this a lot. So this is pretty cool data to have um, when you're teaching those classes. So when we got into surveying devices, just to begin with, we walked one of the areas with this NetLI CyberScope and sadly, the Android app kept crashing. That device, um, as you all know, runs on Android. It saw so many beacons, it just couldn't handle it. Um, we were very sad, we wanted to get great data for everything, but the, um, I was talking to some people yesterday, or two days ago, and it was like, NetLA is a great tool for spot checking. Um, so if it's, it's a great tool, I'm not bashing on them. We just, in the football stadium, we had problems. Worked great in the, uh, in the high school, we just had so many beacons in that stadium, we, it really crashed. So not bashing on them, we just didn't get any data from them. Um, next data point, Cytos guys. We had so much data, we overwhelmed their cloud. <laughs> this, was, this, this sat like this for 24 hours. We were on the phone with them, they fixed it as, I've been told that this will not happen now. But we, we crashed their cloud, it had so much data. Um, Pretty cool little data point. So this is just a sample. This is in the tower. Um, so if you know how the football fields are set up, they have a tower typically on one side where all the media and everybody sits. 
So this is just one floor of the tower, um, a view of everybody, well, the three vendors, side by side by side, all the APs they could have. We discovered that they had turned, the company that had done the redesign had just taken the university's design and put it back in place. The university had realized that it didn't work and so they turned off every other AP. These guys left them on. So we found out that was a problem um, in the tower, but so that's why you have an AP every, other, every room across the way, adding into all the APs you can hear outside. Lots and lots of issues. Um, and then we get into the bowl. <laughs> That's a lot of APs, right? <laughs> so you'll notice on the Cytos one here, another credit to the Cytos guys, when we were doing this, we were worried if we were gonna overwhelm the tools. So we were talking with them and um, we talked with Hamina, they said, you're fine, Ekhal, we have been used many, many times in stadiums and so we knew those tools were fine. Talking with the Cytos guys, they were a little worried that we might, after overwhelming their cloud, they were a little worried that we might cause more issues. And so they asked us just to survey one section and put it on a different map and so we broke it up. We have the full stadium um, just in different maps. We're working with them with that. So, but that's a lot of freaking APs um, out there. And so pretty cool. Uh, as I talked about before, getting down into the coverage areas, you're covered. <laughs> one AP can cover that whole stadium. So we're not, I'm not looking at coverage things with this one, but pretty cool data points um, we're, we've been looking at. So when it comes to the four tools, which one's best is everybody's been bugging me. Oh, which one's best, which one's best. It really doesn't matter. It comes down to which one you have. Go use it. Learn how it works. Go perform with it. Um, put it to, through its paces, test it out. Tests like this are really cool. We can't all afford all four tools. I don't have all four tools. I bar we, we, we got several people that had the different tools and brought them together so we could test one against the other. In this, in this scenario, but really just use the tool that you know best and it um, very useful. They all have their benefits, they all have their drawbacks, like Cytos really struggled. We were wondering about overwhelming their cloud. That may be an issue. Um, we're all trying to learn and grow from each other. These type of things help the vendors be better. Um, we gave Hamina a ton of data, we gave Cytos a ton of data, we, everybody got a ton of data. Hopefully we can get the um, NetAlly one fixed and so that app won't crash in the future. Um, and so this, it won't overwhelm a stadium so we could get the data for that. Um, but really cool use of the tools. And that's what I've got. Um, Mark Houts, CW Ne 500, as was mentioned <laughs> this morning. But if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks, guys.